What's up, my geeks? Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine. Today we're going to take a look at this. This is the TP-Link Omada, a router without Wi-Fi. And we're going to talk about why I like having these along with a Wi-Fi router. We're going to box it and, and set it up and show you a little bit more. Next on Geekazine. Today, we're taking a look at the Omada here. This is the Gigabit VPN router, the ER605 model. Full disclosure, I did purchase the TP-Link Omada with my own funds. Nobody's sponsoring this video, so. And of course, all opinions are of Geekazine. You can find out all the information about my reviews over at geekazine.com forward slash review. If you'd like your product to be reviewed, all you have to do is contact me, and we can set up a time to take a look at the product. Let me show you all the, the features of the Armada here. It is a gigabit VPN router. It's got SD-WAN ability. We'll talk about that in a minute. Intelligent monitoring, traffic control settings, supports IPsec, PPTP, all these protocols that you might not use, but that's okay, it's nice to have them. And it blocks denial of server attacks. So what's really cool about this is you can set this up if you're getting ready to bring your cloud into your house. Having a dedicated machine that'll hold all your files that you can get to, this box is really nice to have. You can get to your, your videos and your pictures, so you can have simple things, a lot of control at home when you're away. The, the biggest reason why I get a box like this is because I like to keep my Wi-Fi router separate from my regular router. Now, you might have a Wi-Fi router at home and it's got a couple ports for ethernet jacks in the back and it's all well and good to have, but you're putting all of your eggs into one basket when it comes to serving out your internet or your intranet inside of your house. I'll explain for a second here. You have different types of connections. You have ethernet connected devices and then you have Wi-Fi connected devices. You put them all into one device then everybody's talking to that one device going back and forth and saying, I need this, I need this. That could really overwhelm your router. So if the kids are playing Xbox, if you're watching movies at 4K, if somebody else is surfing on the computer, personal assistants are, uh, are trying to do things, AI is coming into play. So a lot of data is coming back and forth. To have it come in and out of one box, technically makes the box the bottleneck. Now with Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 7, we're getting better devices that can handle more instructions, more devices. But you'll want to do some sort of separation simply because of the fact that a router is there to route. Maybe you have it setting up IP addresses through what's called DHCP. So you don't even think about how it connects up. You just plug it in and it's connected. Maybe you have it where you have one computer in your house talking to another computer in your house. In all reality, once it's got that IP address, it doesn't need the router at all. It just needs a simple point to point to get through there. That's why I usually like to have a switch in between. So that switch can handle those two computers talking, but the router is going, yeah, I really don't care about that conversation. So I'm going to watch for stuff that I do need to focus on. And that's where something like this comes in. Plus the fact that this is what's called an SD-WAN device, which means that let's say you have more than one company that can offer you internet. If you have two internet connections that come into your home, then if one of them goes down for some reason, the other one stays up and you can continue to work. If you do business at home, which I do, you can bring in two internet lines, set them up, and then you can have one that's dedicated for your work and one that's dedicated for the families playing at Xbox games, watching movies or anything like that. And then if one of those internet connections goes down for a minute, a day or whatever, the second uh, internet connection will stay active. And then you could take all that information, you could say, okay, if Netflix can't go through that internet connection, move it over to here for the time being until this one comes back up. On the same token, if you're doing a lot of business stuff like on live streaming, you could say live streams go through this uh, internet and all that Netflix stuff goes through this internet. And if that internet goes down, Netflix can't come over here and my most crucial stuff goes through this internet. And if this internet goes down, then they can come over to here. But if that internet goes down, it can't come back. You get the idea? The sky's the limit to have that fail safe. It's really nice. Plus, this is what a lot of businesses use in remote locations. So they have one WAN that's connected to the internet and one that actually is dedicated as a VPN connection to another local office. You can safely transfer back and forth files, folders, programs, whatever on that side. And then your internet 
for your regular web surfing. Let's just get into this right here. There it is. So what do we got here? Uh, we basically got a power plug right there. And we got the, the router right there. We've got, looks like some feet that you can attach if, uh, if you need to. And then lastly, we've got some uh, documentation here. And then a simple ethernet cord that can go from your modem to the router right here. This is a simple Cat 5e cable. I'll most likely switch it out with a Cat 6 cable because I am doing Cat 6 or better for my connections. We'll take the bag off here and take the bag off here. We won't uh, we won't put the feet on right now, but I'll probably put them on in a minute. There we go. All right, let's take a look at what we've got right here. As you can see, we have multiple Ethernet ports. Five of them to be exact. This one is the WAN port. So this basically will go from your internet modem right into here. However, these are all managed ports, which means that you can do a lot of different things to them. Like for instance, if you had that second internet connection, you could set this up as another WAN port and then bring that internet connection through here. Maybe a third WAN connection can go right here. And then these two are for your LAN. So you could go to your switch or you could go to your computer, however you want. There's no Wi-Fi on this thing. And like I said, I do that by design. I believe the TP-Link Amada does have a Wi-Fi version of this router. But like I said, I like to keep things separate to keep data moving. And if I go from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 7 to Wi-Fi 8, I can still keep this box in the ex exact same place. This is where the configuration is going to happen. This is where you're going to get your IP addresses. This is where you're going to get your sub masks. This is where you're going to do all your routing and your protection from this box. Continuing on here, we do have some link lights right here telling us our power, our system, our USB. We have a USB a port right here. We'll talk about how to use that in a little bit. And then over here, we have the reset button for this device. We got vents on the side, so you want to keep those clear. On the bottom, we do have mounting points, so you can plug it, put it onto a wall or a rack or anything like that. And on the back here, we have two things. We have that power plug option and then a Ken Kensington lock option. So you can secure this down if this is in a public place. That's basically it for this part of the router. So let's go ahead and let's get this turned on, connected up to a computer so we can take a look at what this router is gonna be doing on your network. All right, we have this set up, just plugged it in into a laptop. I'm gonna show you this really quick. So how I normally set things up is I don't have it plugged into the internet yet. I have the cable that we got from the box that's actually in LAN 2. It's very important you put it in the LAN 2, not the WAN, but the LAN 2 and when you do this and then plug it directly in the computer. So now I can do my configuration from there. So what we've got here, uh, of course, when you start it up, you go to the IP address and then you configure it with a username and a password. This is the system status uh, showing you everything up and down. If you have multiple WANs, you'll see interface name of WAN, WAN1, WAN2 WAN uh, right there with all the information. We've got the traffic statistics that's going to tell us where the bandwidth's coming in, where it's going out from there. Quick setup is what what you can do to reset up your network. Let's go to the network. We have the WAN. If you have these che this checkbox is another WAN and another WAN, you'll actually have multiple tabs here to do your configuration. And of course, configuration is through that tab right there. Whether it's a dynamic IP, usually uh, internet modems give you a dynamic IP. The LAN area is also going to be fairly straightforward. As you can see, there's one computer connected up to it, and that's this machine right here. You have your DHCP client list, which once again, we see our client, and then we have address reservation. Now, right now I have this set, so this one computer, it gets dot 100. If another computer connects up to this network, it can never have 100. I can delete it very easy through the delete option right there, go back to the client list and save it. IPTV, most people don't need to worry about that, but you do have that option if you're bridging or if you're, uh, however you're setting up your network. MAC addresses, this is for the device. You can change out your MAC address if you have 
competing Mac addresses out there. We've got the switch, how we have the LAN ports set up and what they're going to be doing. We got VLAN, what ports are virtual LAN. You can uh, set up your IPv6 from here if you want to use IPv6. And then of course that USB port that I showed you earlier. Keep in mind, that's a tethering port, it's not storage. So I don't think you can plug in a USB drive and use that to transfer files over. Let's go over to the preferences. We got the IP group where you can set up different IP addresses. Some computers can be on this network, some can be on this network. You can separate your business versus your home stuff, for example, and you can set that up there. You can set time ranges, which means that uh, this IP address will be on at this time and off at this time. So you can really tighten down your network your VPN, virtual private network protocol. Uh, keep in mind if you use VPN and let's say you have a 500 gig down, 500 gig up, when you enable VPN, you are enable a security protocol, which means that you will not get to use the full 500 uh, megabytes down. You'll use more like 250 to 300. It's about the security and the privacy. Then we got transmission folder. We can uh, set up for NAT, NAT. Uh, if you don't need to worry about that, you don't have to touch that. So it's going to be disabled. Bandwidth control. You can say, okay, the kid's Netflix machine, you can set it to this much bandwidth. And if they go over that, then it's going to limit them. Max sessions. Let's say you have the kids bring home friends. They can have a maximum number of sessions that are open at a time. So if you're doing business, they're not flooding your network. Load balancing. This is where you're going to uh, figure out what goes where. And like I said, if your computer's internet goes down, then it'll hop over to the other one. But if the kid's internet goes down, it's not going to hop over to your line. You can set all the figure all that out from here through the load balancing and through the routing. Firewall, fairly straightforward. You can set up all the firewall rules from here. Web filtering, which is going to tell you how everything is going to get filtered. We have web security. Uh, you can go through that as well. We got the VPN information right here. So you can set up your virtual private network uh, through anything like OpenVPN, PPTP, or whatnot. Authentication, so other who, who gets the ability to look at this and control information. So you can set up users from here and authentication settings. Like for instance, can they connect up in while they're at home? Can they connect up while they're on the road to configure this router or whatnot? So then we have services like dynamic DNS. Uh, if you want to put in like Google's DNS, UPnP, if you need to set that up. And then of course, all the system tools. We've got the admin set up, the management. Uh, we can do a factory restore. We can do controller settings. We can do a diagnostic from here. We can set up our time settings. Keep in mind, I have this air gapped right now, but if you do connect it up to the internet, make sure that back on the settings status page, the system time is correct. Right now it says 2018. If I hooked up any software that uh, looked at licensing and dates, I uh, might be thinking I'm gaming their licensing system and then lock up the software. And then finally, a system log. Everything that uh, that went right, went wrong is going to be showing you right here into the log, which you can control if you want to. And that's it before we did the actual firmware update to the newest one. So I'm not sure what, what version of firmware is on here. We'll do the update. Most likely none of this will change. Maybe a new feature or two will, will pop in. But that's basically what you get on here. Now, once again, what you really get is security. If you've got a home-based business and you've got family that wants to watch movies and play games and you're getting another internet connection to put in as far as fail-safe, using a device like this is going to help you so much in getting your information sorted out so when you're doing work, the kids video watching the games or anything like that is not getting affected to what you're doing. And that's the best part, because like I said, most people have multiple options for Internet nowadays. And you can actually bring in two forms of Internet connection into the house. If you're doing work from home, this thing has what's called well, with the second LAN, you can set up what's called an MLPS, which then securely connects up to your company. And so you can work securely 
to the company's servers. Anyway, a lot more on here. I know we went through a quick uh, 5,000 foot view, but the best part about this is I set this up. My modem goes in here, can have a couple LANs go out, but I usually put one out to the switch, one out to my wireless router, and then I let this do the one thing that it needs to do, and that, well, two things basically, assign IP addresses and protect the bad stuff from getting in through the internet. So. That's the TP Link Omada series, the ER605 unit. There's a lot other devices that can come with this. You can get a whole system, which include repeaters and routers and switches that you can add to this Omada system. You can check that out over at TP Link. But for now, Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine. Thanks a lot for watching. Go ahead and like subscribe over at youtube.com forward slash geekazine. Hit the bell notification so those YouTubers get their wings. Until next time, you guys geek out and surf the web safely.